Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres, from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is a podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah, and it is a beautiful but very hot Tuesday here in Northern California. Yeah, we uh, we got up to the triple digits, which I guess it happened later this year, so I really shouldn't complain, but I'm going to complain. It's hot, and that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. At any rate, I am happy to be with you, despite the temperature, for this uh, Tuesday interview day. I am speaking today with Stanetta Anthony about her new children's book, A Home for Sally. This is a really sweet book. Um, Sally has a longing to be adopted that began when she was placed in a kennel permanently. A Home for Sally shares the story of a young poodle who considers she is unlovable and unadoptable because of her disability. Sally believed that her dream of once again having a family may never come true. So that is the description on the back of the book. And um, the problem for me about children's books is that I just want to tell you the whole thing. <laughs> like I just want to describe the entire book because, you know, it's a children's book, so it doesn't take that long to read. And this one is really sweet. It, it, it is um, a little sad because, uh, as it says on the back, Sally is, is concerned that she's never going to have a forever home. She is placed in a kennel along with her um, siblings from her the, the same litter. All of her siblings are adopted, but because she was born without um, one of her paws, she is... Um, She's, she has more difficult time being adopted, and so she watches as all these other animals from the, all these other dogs at the kennel are adopted, and it's, it's hard to read, actually, at times, <laughs> for me, my, my soft heart, I was like, I'll adopt you, Sally, I realize she's a fictional puppy, but I kind of fell in love with her a little bit, she's adorable, and I, I I'll adopt her, um, so in the meantime, she has her own issues of self-confidence and um, body image, and she's got some bullying that happens in the book that she's she's trying to deal with. I won't tell you the end of the story, but it, it does have a happy ending, and I'm not giving that away. Um, Stanetta mentions that herself. So uh, another thing I like about this book is that there is a mini dictionary at the back that De defines, excuse me, some of the words that might not be as familiar to younger readers. And there is also a, a pet adoption resource in the back. Stanetta is in the Chicago area, so there are several in the Chicago area, as well as a National Mill Dog Rescue in Colorado Springs. So it gives you some good places to uh, go in case you're curious about rescue dogs. This is um, a book that promotes adopting rescue dogs and uh, and looking beyond the surface to find you know that one dog that may be maybe the perfect fit for you as a dog owner myself like i said i was like oh i, I just felt i yeah i i felt bad while i was for sally while i was reading it and i wanted to pick her up and 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 hug her even though she's a fictional dog i was going to adopt her <laughs> from, right from the book if that was possible don't know how my husband would feel about that when i came home with a uh fictional cartoon dog from a book but hey he'll deal with it he's the one that got me hooked on dogs in the first place right if you are a dog lover, or if you are a fan of children bo children's books, or if you are interested in this book at all, I do have copies to give away. So stay tuned to the end of the episode, and I'll tell you how you can win a signed copy of A Home for Sally. So let's go ahead and get to that interview with Stanetta Anthony. Hi, Stanetta. Thank you so much for joining me on the podcast. Hi, Sarah. How are you? Thank you for having I me today. 
I am well. Um, it is wonderful to have you here, and we are here to talk about your very sweet book, A Home for Sally. Before we talk about the book, though, uh, if you could share a little bit about yourself so my listeners can get to know you. Okay. Well, I am a mature writer, uh, 50-something, mm-hmm. and let's see, I uh, just celebrated my 31st wedding anniversary. I am a mom, a grandma, a volunteer, a former educator, and keep pretty busy along with writing. So that's kind of like my life. And I'm a big Jeopardy fan. So I've been loving the episodes with Jeopardy right now. So yes. That's- that's my life. That's <laughs> it's my been life. pretty exciting. <laughs> it's wonderful. It has been. It has been. Okay. So can you talk a little bit then about the book, A Home for Sally? Uh, well, A Home for Sally is about, a, of course, a a puppy. Her name is Sally. And she is special. She's a special needs puppy. And her story is, where she did have a forever home initially and her owner was no longer able to care for her and her siblings and so she had to put her in a long-term kennel and so that's actually where Sally's story uh, begins Uh, her residing in a kennel the uncertainty about having another home being bullied uh, she has some issues even with herself, her appearance. Uh, so, so that's really uh, her story. She feels she feels kind of like some of us feel sometimes. When is someone going to accept me? When is someone going to bring me into their home? Uh, I don't like the way I look. Mm-hmm. So she she has a. A good storyline that I believe many of us can relate to, children and mm-hmm. adults alike, because we struggle yeah. with some things, some insecurities, and so she has some insecurities as well. Yeah. And with the bullying, she's not just bullied by other dogs; she is actually bullied by adults as well. Uh, with the pointing finger where they're saying, look at that puppy, uh, she looks funny. So she's bullied all around. And so she goes through some challenges. She goes through some challenges. She has a happy ending, but she has to go from one point to the other point. Mm-hmm. And what inspired you then to write this story? Well, what inspired me was I when I would be, Uh, watching different television programs, and they would have feature uh, pet adoptions. And I always see that they never featured special needs uh, puppies or cats or anyone who had some type, any animal who had a disability. And I understand that you want to put the best foot forward when you're promoting adoption. But I always wondered, what about the other animals who are not, quote unquote, have a disability that are considered healthy? I, I, I want to use my word carefully, carefully when I'm saying that. And so that's actually what promoted me to write a home for Sally. I am going to jump in here now so we can take our first break of the podcast. When we come back, we'll be talking more about Sally as the main character of this story. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Hi, this is Sarah from the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I want to take a moment to talk to you about The Emissary, book one of the One Great Year series. Written by Tamara Veach and Renee DeFazio, The Emissary is great for fans of historical fiction, epic fantasy, and spirituality. Marcus and Theron are two lovers bound by an eternal and unshakable bond. 
As a series of catastrophic events nearly destroys their world, the two, along with a chosen few, become emissaries, destined over the course of 13,000 years and through many reincarnations to lead humanity into an era of peace and prosperity as foretold by the elders of their race. But the forces of evil have taken possession of one man, Helgol, who relentlessly pursues Marcus and Theron through time, determined to destroy them and ruin all hope for salvation. Good and evil come to blows, and the future of mankind hangs in the balance. This story shows how every soul has a purpose, all lives have meaning, and we are all connected. If you're interested in finding out more about this series, Tamara and Renee will be guests on the GSMC Book Review podcast on June 18th. And books are available at Amazon.com or by ordering through your favorite bookstore. If you're searching for an epic adventure to read this summer, the One Great Year series might just be what you're looking for. Still on the search of that one true love? On the limbo in this crazy world of dating, marriage, relationships. Well, listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Relationship Podcast. Your one-stop podcast for everything about relationships. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. I am speaking today with Stanetta Anthony about her children's book, A Home for Sally. Let's go ahead and get back to that interview and find out what is uh, special about Sally as the main character. And um, Sally is a very sweet little puppy. What about her do you think will resonate with readers? I think her story resonates with readers. Because I think everyone can see a, maybe a little bit of themselves in Sally, or if not themselves, maybe someone else that they think that uh, has has Sally's story. Uh, maybe it's something about our own selves that we don't like. Uh, that's why we have plastic surgery, <laughs> uh, you know. And uh, so I think that's what would resonate with her. Her story, we could see a little bit. Uh, maybe another child, maybe a parent or something. And then you can see the need for adoption as well, especially among such needs uh, animals. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Did you do any particular research for the story? No, not beforehand, but afterwards. Uh, so post, I did a lot of research. And what I found out is that special needs puppies are the second to third to be adopted. And what that means is they are along, almost along the lines of an aging animal who will be euthanized. So some of them are eventually adopted, but they are twice as they have the choice of length of waiting to be adopted as a healthy pet. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I found out about uh, them. So, and that information comes from different resources, uh, uh, Cruelty Society, the ASPCA, the Anti-Cruelty Society. So it comes from a number of resources. And uh, the numbers are in the hundreds of thousands. So it's not thousands, hundreds of thousands of special needs uh, animals that are waiting, well, I'm saying uh, canines that are waiting to be adopted, whether mm -hmm. puppies or adults. Right. Oh. Um, what age group do you think uh, responds best to the book? I believe the age group because I have gone out to do reading. So the age group that I find the most are between five and ten. Mm -hmm. And uh, the question that I'm asked most of the time by them is, 
why is she was she missing a paw? Why is she missing a paw? Mm -hmm. And so I do explain why she is missing a paw and, you know, her special needs. So that's the one thing that kind of resonates with them. And that's the one thing they actually see when I show the front cover of the book. That is the first thing that they see is she looks a little funnier or something. (laughs) Right. Something that the children will say or why why is her paw missing or they'll say something to mm-hmm. let me know that this is not normal. She doesn't look quote unquote normal, even though she's right. normal. Yeah, yes. And so then what do you hope that the readers will take away from the book and Sally's story? Well, um I hope for them well the readers to do uh both things, to understand, to be accepting of those uh, animals and people alike who seem to look a little different from us and that they are just as normal as everyone else. They may look a little different on the outside, but on the inside, we're all the same. And the other thing is promoting pet adoption, that if you haven't considered adopting a pet, Maybe, you know, just kind of research and think about it. Just think about it. So those are the two things that I want readers to consider when they're reading A Home for Sally. Mm -hmm. And, um, Stanetta, are you the illustrator of the book? No, that's not me. I only (laughs) – the publisher had to do the illustrations. The best I can do is stick people. (laughs) (laughs) Me too, and they don't even look great. (laughs) And they don't. Their heads are all out of whack. (laughs) So, no, I can tell you what I want, but I cannot draw anything. (laughs) And then, so did you work closely with them to kind of – describe the pictures that you wanted for, to go along yes. with the words. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yes, I did work very closely with them. And it was, um, it, of course, it's a process because I am telling them what I want and you have to try to figure out in, your, in my head what I want. I can describe what I want, but it was a uh, a close working project between them and me. Yeah. yeah. And they I- got it on target. Wonderful. Um, will Sally get a follow-up story, do you think? She is – I am working on a follow-up story for her because she has two special friends that are in the story now. And so I'm going to do a follow-up story on her friends. So we're working on that right now. Okay. Wonderful. And – um You are an educator, so I'm sure you've done some writing throughout your career, but when did you begin writing, and is it something that you've always wanted to do? Uh, You know what? I I never thought about writing until later in life, and how it came about was kind of funny. I was always retelling stories. I always told retold the the bears or... uh, uh, the three pigs and wolves. I always retold stories and I would always make them my own, but I never wrote them down. And one day someone asked me about uh, creating a curriculum for my preschool class. And I was working on that and I did a story. And when I read it to someone else, and they asked me, where did I get that book from? And I was like, what book? And that oh. kind of began the process of me writing. And after that, it just I'm going to say the writing book just hit. And I start writing about everything. Even though everything isn't published, I just started writing about everything. And so uh, I did my first book when I was 49 and a half. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. So it was a little later, a little later. But yeah. I feel like it's never too late. It's never too late. And you you mentioned that you have grandkids. Do you uh, do you read your stories to your grandkids? Uh, yes, I read. Yes, and they tell me the truth when they like it. <laughs> yes, they <do. laughs> and so when I'm writing, I 
when I finish something, I read it to them, and they are the best critics a grandmother can have Mm -hmm. Uh, because they are going to tell me everything. They help me through the process, uh, even with the illustrations. Uh, I have them to look at the illustrations as well to see if they like them or they don't like them. And they are very honest with me, and I appreciate that. And I gauge myself accordingly because they are my reading audience because they range in age from four to ten. Mm-hmm. And That's so perfect. they, and so it's perfect for me. And like I said, they're very honest. I appreciate it. I have to put my feelings on the shelf sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Exactly. It's, okay. It's, it's a little bittersweet, you know, because they are very honest. But at the same time, you're like, dang. Yes, they are. <laughs> I don't like that. (laughs) Oh, kiddos, their honesty is refreshing and uh, sometimes heartbreaking. (laughs) I feel that way about my nieces. So we are going to take our second break of the podcast. When we come back, we'll be talking more about Stanetta's writing and the process and some of her advice that she has for aspiring authors. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and the conclusion to my interview with uh, author Stanetta Anthony about her book, A Home for Sally. So in terms of your writing journey, you came to it a a little later, maybe than some. Uh, Do you have advice for aspiring authors? Yes, I do. One of the things is, um, and I guess I'm asked this question quite a bit now, is where do I start? And I think it's just, just start. Uh, sometimes that's the hardest part. Where do I start? Mm-hmm. Uh, the one thing I advise is if you have a cell phone or some type of recorder, carry it around with you and just talk into it. Uh, take your pen and pad, which I do uh, carry around with me all the time, and just write. You don't know if a book or a poem or some uh some type of writing may come out of what you're doing, but you just start and you just begin somewhere. And the other thing is books do not sell themselves. So you have to be your own promoter. You have to promote yourself. Marketing uh, can be a scary world, but you have to enter that world and you have to do what you need to do. And if you decide to write a book, if you're considering it, I would say start marketing yourself even before you write the first word. And uh, what uh, some of the things I did was I taken some classes. I taken some financial classes. I talk with some uh, business people. I talk with different authors about their process to help me in my process. So those are some of the other things. And be careful about who you share your work with because this is your baby. And you can get the positive and the negative 
from outside sources, sometimes even family. So you want to be careful with that uh, before you start sending out your work. You want to make sure that it's copywritten. That was what I did personally. Other people may not advise that, but that's what I did. And I felt more comfortable with that. And it's a minimal cost. So some of those are some of the things that I would advise. And then learn who your reading audience is. Uh, I I know that children aren't going to necessarily buy my books and it's going to be adults, but I know who my reading audience is. So mm-hmm. you want to make sure that you're doing your homework. And it takes a little time, but it's well worth it. It's well worth it. So do your homework. Get a author's plan together, just like you would a business plan or you have a budget or something for your home. Get a plan for yourself as an author and take your writing seriously. Take it seriously if you decide to do something. So that's what advice I would give. All right. Thank you so much. Do oh, you welcome. have Do you have favorite authors or genres that you like to read for yourself? You know what, I am not really. Okay. I'm kind of, you know what, I'm kind of, uh, is this something that I like? Is this a, a book that I like? Is this an author that I like? I just pick it up and I'll read it because I read everything. Only thing I don't read is horror books. But mm-hmm. I will read everything else. Any any other book, I, I I'll read it. I'll read it. Okay. Thank you. Um, do you have a website? Yes, I do. Okay. And my web my website is Stanetta and I'll spell that out for you as S T E N E T T A Anthony A N T H O N Y. So it's all one word dot Weebly, which is W E B L Y dot com. Okay. Thank you for that. And um, are you on social media at all? Where Can people find you on social media? Yes, I am on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, LinkedIn, and Instagram. So okay. if you just put in my name, you'll find me somewhere. And I'm always posting something. Okay, wonderful. So we've talked a bit about the book. We've talked about writing. Is there anything that we haven't covered that you would like to bring up now about um, your books or writing or anything at all? Uh, you know what? No, I don't. I think I think I'm okay. I think so. Okay. All right. Okay. Perfect. Well, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to speak to me about your book, A Home for Sally. It is available now. People can find it on Amazon and everywhere, pretty much? Yes, they can find it on Amazon, Barnes & Noble. If you want to buy your book, it's uh, Ingram and Apple iTunes. So you can find oh. it just about anywhere. Perfect. All right, so thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. I really appreciate it, Stanetta. Thank you. Thank you once again to Stanetta Anthony for joining me to talk about A Home for Sally. Thank you, as always, to you, my listeners. I appreciate you greatly. If you are interested in a copy of A Home for Sally, a signed copy of A Home for Sally, you can enter to win one. Just go to our Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter pages. That is... um, the GSMC Book Review, Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. You can find those links in the show description or on our website. So find the post that says GSMC Book Review Podcast, Episode 160, Interview with Stanetta Anthony, and comment and like that post for a chance to win a home for Sally. So again, it's uh, Episode 160, Interview with Stanetta Anthony, and comment and like the post. As always, I will say, please share the post. Uh, please follow us on social media. Give us a nice review. All those wonderful things that we ask you to do at the end of a podcast. But in order to win a copy of the book, you do have to comment and like the post. So thank you once again to Stanetta. Thank you to you, my listeners. Please join me again on Friday, and we'll be talking about, of all things, books. Can you imagine? In the meantime, I hope you're having a wonderful week and that you have time to get yourself lost in a good book. Thanks. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. 
part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.